I think that when Brian's description of what the platform does, who the members of it are, and how it works, and, and then your description of the tools actually blend very well together. So I think we could have comments and questions addressed to either of these. And okay, we're going to begin. Uh, let's see. I have trouble seeing, but Gunnar, I think you had your hand up. And please say your name first and then make your comment. Oh, sorry. And wait for the microphone. Three instructions. Yes. <laughs> My name is Gunnel Axelsson Nykander. I'm from Church of Sweden International Department. Uh, and I have actually two questions. The first is about the, the kind of dialogues you have. I, I see that most of the tools and the dialogues you have are really among the members, of course, because that's the purpose. But my question is what kind of di dialogues you have vis-a-vis -vis the recipient countries on the one hand and civil society on the other hand, both in recipient and, di and uh, donor country. Um, and secondly, uh, you were mentioning, and it was shown up in some of the pictures, that the work on CADEP, and I have a specific, specific question then about what the kind of work this group is doing. And um, I also have a piece of uh, information to share, actually. Uh, it's a report produced by an, a network called APRODE, which is uh, the um, uh, faith-based faith aid organizations in Europe, mm. together with PELUM, which is an Africa-based network mm. called uh, Agricultural Research in Africa, why CADEP should follow ISTEP. So it's actually um, a critique of the fourth pillar of CADEP in, in the light of the ISTEP recommendations. So my question is really, if I want to share this with the, with the network or the platform, who should I send it to? Good, excellent. Okay, I think... Uh, take some, we take some more questions. All right, that's fine. Uh, I, I see Angolia back there. He needs a microphone. Yeah, my name is Ngolia Kimanzu. I work for the Swedish Cooperative Center, but also I'm a member of AgriCode, a network of uh, agri-agencies involved in agriculture and road development involving agri agencies in Europe, Canada, and Asia. I just came from Rome two days ago, where we were in deep discussions with IFAD on uh, the role of farmers' organizations mm -hmm. in agricultural development. Uh, and from what you presented, Brian, I didn't see that as a focus in, in current work of activities. What, what plans do you have for the future? Because we know most of the programs that have been developed in the past, they have really left out farmers' organizations. They, they are not very strong in the development world, but they are quite important. And I think if you really want to, to address issues of poverty at a deeper level, you need to engage the farmers' organizations. Right now, we, in, we are discussing with IFAD also the question of development for results. How do we, how do we measure impact with the current systems that we have? We have a very robust uh, data collection tool that we have developed together. And we, we are looking at how to, to, to get that processing integrated with the IFAD uh, measurement of results system. I would like to have your comments on that, whether you see there's any or more room for, future, for more deeper engagement with the, the platform. Okay, thank you. Matthew, do we have any responses? No? Okay, please. Right here. I'm calling in. I just want to ask the que first question. I, I want to ask some. I want to ask Brian uh, about something in Asia. May I ask that? Because I don't know if it is donor nation or not. Is it only donor nations mm. that concern donor Asian? The, the platform is made up of the donor. <coughs> Yeah. As members, yes. Yeah. But obviously it must relate to the wider world. Yeah, okay. If it's <laughs> I, <I'm, laughs> I just want to ask Sorry you. Sorry to break it to you. Yeah. I just ask you something that concerns the Asians very much. And uh, the discussion now going on, is particularly in India and China, uh, that is about the um, dumping of food. The dumping of food makes the farmers very difficult to sell their products because the dumping products are much cheaper because the relative country had uh, very much subsidies and that, that concerned the policy, the world policy. The second question is about the GM food 
and uh, you go to anywhere, they don't mention GM food, but in Asia, it is a war between the GM food and the traditional eco food. I, I, don't, I don't know if you have a comment on that. It's very sensitive questions. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Other questions, please? Anyone? Comments? Yes? You need the microphone. Yeah. My name is Rodolfo Lindquist. I, I am a, a bioenergy technologist and uh, a, a farmer. And uh, I just would like to know if the experiences I'm going to have in my uh, planned sustainable agriculture in my farmland, it could be related somewhere else. Could I find people or organizations or farmers through this platform? that they're doing or uh, trying to do the more or less the same that I do in my farm. Okay, thank you very Good. much. I think we've got quite a few, we're going to... F I should probably take some yeah. answers perhaps before, if you yeah. want to do that. How yes, please. I'm listening. Oh, actually, I guess <laughs> I, I don't need the microphone, I can talk into this. Thank you all for those, for those comments and you've, you've hit a few uh, issues uh, squarely on, on, on the head. Let me talk about this first one that a couple of you, you talked about, the relationship with other recipients, with civil society uh, and members. The, the global donor platform is by definition donors. Uh, the, the, the genesis was, as I said earlier, the issue that donors themselves in their own organizations didn't feel they were getting enough resources. That meant the World Bank, it meant uh, Africa Development Bank, it meant DFID, for example, were, were having problems within their own institutions, raising the profile of agriculture for their own programs, wanted to get together so they could lobby internally. And at the same time, you also recognize the importance of lobbying and advocating uh, externally as, as, as donors. Um, we realize that agriculture is a unique sector insofar as donors and all the public sector in recipient countries are not simply the equation. It's not like the health sector or the education sector because you do have the private sector involved in agriculture and you do have civil society. And both those groups are able to join the, the platform as associate members and we invite them to our annual general meetings and invite them to members. We had the annual general assembly the year before last in Tunis, in the courtesy of hosted by the African Development Bank. And the, I well remember the first day's opening presentations on the platform. There was somebody from the platform. There was a bilateral donor. There was a representative from the private sector, in this case, a group from East Africa. And there was Mohamed Sissoko from the farmers' organizations from from West Africa and each spoke and each contributed to the event and in doing so you are informing the donors of those particular perspectives. I spoke a lot about the private sector recently in this presentation because if you like that is the interface that is the greyest area for us. I'm very pleased to hear you are a DFAD and I, I know that Marlene Ramirez from Fildra who I've worked with a lot in the Philippines program was at the, 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 the farmers organizations and you'll know that EFAD has a lot of interaction with the farmers' organizations. But my question, the reason perhaps I didn't express it enough was that we're already doing that, but when, w when did you last come to EFAD for a private sector meeting? We don't quite know who to work with. No, we are working closely with, with civil society. We recognize you know, that it's, it's an intrinsic part of that. When we did the presentation at the Busan High Level Forum, it was done with f uh, Filipino civil society. Uh, we work very closely with Better Aid, with the OEC DAC on the Busan group as well. We bring them into that dialogue, but we are responsive to what our donors want. If we start formally to, to represent civil society, we're beginning to move out of our comfort zone. We're into other people's territory. Other entities can say, well, hold on a minute, global platform. If you're an informal group of donors networking, you can't necessarily say you formally represent civil society or the private sector. But we absolutely and always emphasize the, the, the equation that rural poverty alleviation comes from a whole series of actors uh, working, uh, working together. Um, on, the, on, the, on the question of, of and that also includes uh, cooperatives. 
And, and I learned most of my work about cooperatives from Scandinavia, working with the Swedish Cooperative Federation in Zambia on smallholder credit and seeing dairy cooperatives work in Norway. And a lot of those examples, this goes back to, to your question, those subsistence uh, ex uh, work that you're doing is relevant to our work. The feed into the platform arguably is through CEDA and through sweet and through uh, and, and when and so when CEDA says to us in the platform look we really need to emphasize subsistence agriculture there will be other members I'm sure the Swiss the Italians are going to say yes you know they've got the we want to emphasize that work are our donors doing and I think they are you'll hear from Elvin Granger Jones later this afternoon what EFAD's doing in natural resource management a lot of that is developing those those experiences I think you can contact the platform directly there's no problem with that but also if t if I would say if you can empower your own representative to push that message into the platform it's going to carry um, a, a lot more more weight that to some extent responds to this issue about the 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 food dumping the prices the subsidies I mean arguably these are nationally driven policies they're not something that the donors all agree or gov governments all agree to do one could argue the issue of EC subsidies in, con in, in the EC is an issue of a common agricultural policy you know, I'll leave that to my Prime Minister uh, to, to deal with that particular issue these are national policies we know that they're reflected again when our members come through and say we want to focus on an issue we can take that take that through we're only as strong like a good cooperative we're only as strong as what our members want us want us want us to do and you know, on the GM issue yes I mean of course it of course it's it's con uh, controversial different donors have different perspectives and we as a platform sometimes we need to be careful when we were leading up to the COP15 in Copenhagen we produced a background paper on on climate change one of our members very strongly said you can't say that that's not our policy we had to say we had to go back and say look you know and we actually caveated the paper by saying this does not represent the views of all the members but it's a consensual view that this is is a particular issue so that's how we tend to deal with controversial uh, controversial issues on on the uh, on the platform uh, it, to i think if i can just finish on on the cadep yes it, it it's it was a, it's been a key piece of work for for efad uh, going back several years when cadep itself said to us we want the platform to help us interface with all the donors that you that you have uh, working with you Abraham Mayaki said can you help us so what the platform did and what its members agreed to do was that we agreed that one of our uh, the secretariat staff would act as a focal point for for members and a facilitator for the CADAP donors in the CADAP process and so for the last uh, four or five years we've had someone working with the donors uh, task team and the the newsletter that uh, that Pascal put up on the screen is an output uh, of of that particular group we do have a particular uh, secretariat member although he's moving on in a few months who's the CADAP task team leader but if you have information and, and you're quite right that's quite a controversial area pillar for agricultural research if you could feed that piece of information in we will push it out both to the CADEP group but also to our group that's looking at agricultural research and say look this is something that we we need to uh, we need to uh, need to address I think that's uh, yeah. Melinda I've covered those points for now but happy Thank to take more okay is there, do we have further questions or input from um, if I may ask a small question here about the technical side uh, I'm interested in when you talk about uh, these uh, different sharing documents and the database contacts and things oh, like that results. and uh, yeah <laughs> okay we'll get back to you um, and I'm wondering if the different donors uh, have security or or confidentiality concerns that that impede uh, free exchange of information in some cases uh, and also the language Prob does everyone publish in the same language or do they write certain documents in their own languages, which are, in the case of Swedish, for example, of limited international <laughs> viability? Well, the communication within within the network is is in English. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's uh, obviously there's people communicating in other languages, but when it comes to the board and uh, the the working groups, 
that is almost exclusively in English, mm -hmm. just uh, makes it easier. The um, the the information that is shared um, in a way is, I would think, probably not that confidential. What what it's about is to to get things going, and um, there there the the draft documents that are put up, they're basically um, working together on documents that will come out later anyway. So it's um, not confidential in the more narrow sense. It's uh, only that you don't want people to see what you what you just draft. So it's uh, that's not really an, an issue as if you want to feed in there, Brian, but I, I, I think from from our experience mm -hmm. is is nothing to that effect. Uh, that's that's been a problem. The and if if it would be the, the documents in, in those share facilities are, are safe, so there's no there's no issue <coughs> with that. Good to hear. I think we had some results that we were going to come My back apologies, to. My apologies, yes. There was a, <laughs> there was a question on, on the results agenda, and it was, it's, uh, again, one of the work streams that's been regarded as important. As I said, all donors are being, in these, in these difficult financial times, being asked to justify aid budgets, so delivering results and outcomes. Uh, part of the work, and you saw that slide of David, D David Hegwood from, from the U.S. member of the platform, uh, who's part of the... Uh, the, the AVSI, which is the follow-up to the L'Aquila Food Initiative, uh, where we're tracking results on that. And you'll see that came out strongly in the G8 uh, presentation and, uh, and conclusions at the Camp David meeting uh, to, to show results and to identify in particular six African countries uh, known as the Vanguard countries, where we will make an extra effort to show what results are being achieved. Uh, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Mozambique, I think, uh, are the uh, sorry, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and Ghana are the three countries that will be particular targeting for for results uh, uh, reporting. Okay, other. Uh, I have another small question in terms of, of results reporting for your own activities for the for the platform. Uh, you mentioned that some of the important things that you try to do are to avoid duplication. And we see a lot of uh, similar donor initiatives and things that look like they might be a duplication. Do you have any uh, evaluated results that, you're, that the platform has managed to cut down on duplication or streamline something? Uh, we haven't, we haven't uh, evaluated that particular uh, issue. We're conscious of it. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a theme or a mantra we keep circulating within our organizations. And I think insofar as we, all the platform members, try and, and we're actually going to do some mapping of this, we try and inform each and every member what it is we're doing. Mm -hmm. you, uh, this, I must say, one of, the, one of the things that interests me of coming to, to Swedish Cedar is to know exactly what Swedish Cedar is doing. And, and, and uh, we, we're looking at, and that's why the annual report is important, and that's why we also want to, uh, one of the tasks we set ourselves for this year is to, is to map out the principal activities of each of our members. S so we know more to avoid duplication mm -hmm. and to improve the ability to network. A little bit of a gray area yet. Mm -hmm. We're not yet ready to report on results. Uh, if you like, we're still in the basis of just defining the, the problem and how best to address the problem. Then we can go back and start saying how successful we've been in, in, in reducing the amount of, uh, of duplication. Okay. Yeah I, yeah. I think, you know, from looking at the other tools work, it's obviously a, a thing um, you could argue that if duplication has not happened because people talk to each other, that's uh -huh. something that is, um, you difficult know, to uh, measure, di difficult yeah. to measure. Yeah. But I would turn this around and say, if people do talk in our working groups, it would be hard that there would still be duplication if they still talk to each other. Maybe that just uh, is one thing that can feed in there. Yes, yeah. very neat.